Right, before we get into the nitty gritty, we need to talk uh, at a high level. We need to answer the question, what is gamma? Now, gamma involves ensuring that images on your monitor are displayed correctly. It is a way of ensuring that all the wonderful maths uh, used to create the light and materials is calculated in a physically accurate manner. It involves your monitor, your 3D Studio Max settings, your materials, your colours and your lights. It involves your whole workflow. If you want physically accurate results, then it makes sense to work in a physically accurate manner, right the way through the process. It is also worth noting at this point that 3D visualisation is essentially an art form. Many of the best 3D artists in the world use some of this linear workflow, but then divert from it at different stages to create the results thereafter. Every person is different, but the benefit of having a strong linear workflow is most evident in a studio setting, where you need every team member to be working in a consistent way. You want team members to be able to pick up files partway through a project and understand what is going on in the file. That being said, let's look at some of the theory behind Gamma and its effect on our workflows. Right, firstly, the way monitors display light. Let's start from the very beginning. To display images on a monitor, an input voltage is applied, which outputs as light intensity on the screen. Ideally, the input would equal the output in a linear fashion, but in reality, it looks something like this, where the output is not the same as the input. Obviously, a certain amount of energy is lost in the process, creating this drooped light intensity curve. This obviously is not great, and we need to get that light intensity back because we care about all that beautiful colour information uh, that is going on behind the scenes. So, obviously we need to do something about this. We want to bring that uh, relationship between input voltage and screen or light intensity back into linear. So how are we going to do this? Well hopefully even if you flunked maths at school this will still make sense. To bring the light intensity back into linear we need to apply a curve to the input voltage. This curve can be referred to as 2.2 gamma and you'll notice from the diagram that it is a mirror image of our light intensity curve. This 2.2 gamma curve will therefore bring all of the input values up from their old position to form our linear curve. Brilliant! Now that we know what we need to do to solve the problem of the lost light intensity, it begs the question, at what point in the process do we apply this correction? You might think it's as easy uh, as just applying this correction uh, right at the end when you save the file out, but in general you'd be wrong. Well, you'd be partly right, but partly wrong. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The reason it's not that simple is because the textures and colours we are using to make up our render will have already had gamma corrections baked into them so that they would display properly on screen. If, they went, if we then try to apply the gamma correction curve to everything at the end, our maths will be correct under the hood, but our textures and colours will have had two sets of 2.2 gamma correction applied. That's not good. So, before we sort out the problem of our screen light intensity, we need to sort, uh, sort of reverse the gamma which has been uh, previously applied to our textures and colours. We essentially need to take the textures from 2.2 gamma, as we can see here, or sRGB, and make them linear again. We do this by applying an inverse gamma curve calculated as 1.0 over 2.2. By doing this, our textures and colours are brought into linear, as you can see here. With that step completed, we can rest assured that both the maths under the hood and the textures and colours that we are using are all in linear space. We are therefore in full control of what is going on. The final step right at the end when we come to render our image is to bring the image into 2.2 gamma sRGB. We do this because, if you can remember, the light intensity of our screen is lower than it should be. Now that you're overawed and hopefully not confused by the theory of input voltage, output light intensity and gamma correction, we're going to move on to setting this all up in 3D Studio Max and V-Ray.